Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calumson, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we gather around the table of the Eucharist this day of the Lord to know our Lord Jesus Christ as a powerful and caring God. And so in this Mass, let us offer through Him our petitions, our needs, because we know that the power of Jesus cares for us. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in, the in the highest and, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten, begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stilled. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. They who sailed the sea in ships, trading on the deep waters, these saw the works of the Lord and His wonders in the abyss. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. His command raised up a storm wind, which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven. They sank to the depths. Their hearts melted away in their plight. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. They cried to the Lord in their distress. From their straits, He rescued them. He hushed the storm to a gentle breeze, and the billows of the sea were stilled. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. They rejoiced that they were calmed and he brought them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his kindness and his wondrous deeds to the children of men. Give thanks to the Lord. His love is everlasting. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know Him so no longer. 
So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. A great prophet has risen in our midst. God has visited his people. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was and other boats were with him, a violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? whom even wind and sea obey. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We are gathered in this Eucharistic celebration every Sunday so that we could celebrate our faith and not only celebrate our faith but to deepen our faith. Sana po ito ang maaalala natin tuwing linggo na nandito tayo sa simbahan, nagdiriwang ng banal na misa bilang isang pamilya pamayanan ng Diyos na tayo po tuwing linggo ay ipinagdiriwang ang ating pananampalataya ang ating paniniwala kay Jesus at hindi lamang ipinagdiriwang kundi pinapalalim natin linggo-linggo sana ito po ang gusto nating mangyari every Sunday hindi lang magkasama-sama tayo, hindi lamang tayo ay makapagsimba, makapagdiwang, kundi napalalim ko ba ang aking pananalig sa Diyos ngayong linggo na ito. And my dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, we focus on the meaning of our faith in Jesus, especially with 
the story of the gospel passage today when Jesus calmed the storm. Sana po yung kwento ng ebanghelyo natin ngayong araw ay makapagpalalim ng ating pananampalataya. Ang kwento sa ebanghelyo kung saan si Jesus habang sila ay nakasakay sa bangka at mayroong malakas na bagyo at halos masira na ang kanilang sinasakyang bangka. Pinatahimik niya, pinatigil niya ang bagyo. Ano nga ba ang makukuha natin sa kwento na ito? My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to focus on the question of the disciples. Siguro po mapapansin ninyo doon sa kwento na ang naaalala palagi natin ay yung sila ay nasa bangka, bumagyo, pinatigil ni Jesus ang bagyo at natahimik ang kanilang paglalakbay. But my dear brothers and sisters, today, I would like to point out one detail in the gospel passage. When the violent storm came up and it was already breaking the boat, Jesus was sleeping to look si Jesus habang bumabagyo. And the disciples woke him up and asked him this question. Tandaan po ninyo ito. Huwag niyong kakalimutan ng tanong na ito ng mga alagad. The question was, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Ang tanong ng mga alagad kay Jesus, Panginoon, Guru, wala ka bang pakialam sa amin? Wala ka bang pakialam na kami malulunod na, mamamatay na, at ikaw ay natutulog pa? I think the question shows us the deep-seated concern of the disciples. Lord, do you not care? I'm sure, my dear brothers and sisters, one way or another, at one point of our life, we were also able to ask the Lord that question. Lord, do you not care about me? Siguro po, dumating sa punto ng buhay ninyo na naitanong nyo na rin yan sa Diyos. Panginoon, may pakialam ka ba talaga sa akin? Nakikita mo ba talaga ako? Naririnig mo ba talaga ang aking panalangin? My dear brothers and sisters, I would like you to focus on that question today and try through our prayer with our hearts, ask the Lord, Lord, do you still care about us? In this time of pandemic, many have already died, many are sick, many are jobless, let us ask the Lord this question. Lord, do you care about us? And Jesus, in our gospel passage today, when he was asked that question, he calmed the storm and asked them, Do you not yet have faith? Jesus did not directly answer them, but through His actions, Jesus showed them that He cares, that I care for you. By calming the storm, He was able to tell them, Yes, I care for you. 
And the disciples were asking, Who is this that even the winds and sea obey? Hindi lamang nila nasagot ang tanong nila na, Sino ba ito na may kapangyarihan patigilin ang bagyo? They were not just able to answer the question, Who is this? But they were able to answer the question, Does He care? Sana po mga kapatid ngayong araw, hindi lamang natin makilala si Jesus bilang Diyos, kundi makilala natin si Jesus bilang Diyos na mayroong malasakit sa atin. Marami sa atin ang kilala si Jesus. Sino ba si Jesus? Pero ngayong araw, pinakikilala ni Jesus sa atin na siya ay Diyos na may malasakit. A God who cares for us. And this is also the answer of God to Job in our first reading. When Job was undergoing all the sufferings of his life, he lost his treasures, he lost his family, he lost his dignity. But God answered Job in the first reading, I am God who can still the storm, who can stop the waves, who can stop the raging waters of the sea. I am not just a powerful God, I am a God who cares. Pinapakilala ng Diyos sa unang pagbasa na hindi lamang siya Diyos na makapangyarihan, kundi isang Diyos na may malasakit sa atin. I hope, my dear brothers and sisters, this is what we learn today from our readings. We gather in this Eucharist to deepen our faith. And today, Jesus teaches us that your faith in me as God is a God who cares for you. And St. Paul, in our second reading today, in his letter to the Corinthians, tells us, that we must have not just faith, but conviction in faith. He said, once we have come to the conviction that Jesus died for us and raised up for us, then whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away and new things have come. Today, let us have faith in Jesus, not just faith, but faith with conviction. Isang pananampalataya na buhay. Isang pananampalataya na nagsasabuhay. Isinasabuhay ang pananampalataya. Nang sa gayon, sabi ni San Pablo, alisin na ni Jesus ang mga lumang bagay, ang takot, pangamba, pag-aalala, kawalang pag-asa, al aalisin ni Jesus yan, basta't ikaw ay mayroong pananalig na matibay sa Kanya. New things will come, and He will make you a new creation. Kaya ang mga alagad, noong nakita ang kapangyarihan ni Jesus sa dagat, pinatigil niya ang bagyo, inalis ni Jesus ang pangamba, at ang ibinigay sa kanila ay bagong pag-asa. Sapagkat pinakilala niya ang kanyang sarili bilang isang Diyos na may malasakit sa kanila. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, Jesus is teaching us that our God cares for us, that He is a God 
not just a powerful God, but a powerful God who cares for us. Today is Father's Day. And we ask the Lord Jesus to bless our fathers today. To our dear fathers, please teach us Jesus who cares. Kapag nakikita po namin ang mga tatay na mayroong malasakit sa pamilya, kayo po ang magtuturo sa mga anak na mayroong Diyos na may malasakit sa kanila. Sana po ang mga tatay sa loob ng pamilya ang pinanggagalingan ng pananampalataya kay Jesus. Ipapanalangin po namin kayo ngayong araw, aming mga tatay ng pamilya. Sana ang inyong buhay, ang inyong pananalita, ang inyong pag-uugali sa loob ng tahanan ay masabi namin, mayroon kaming Diyos na marunong magmalasakit. We pray for our fathers that your life, your words, your behavior and attitude within the family would teach the children that there is a God, a Father who cares for us. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Even the wind and the sea obey the Son of God. With this in mind, we can pray confidently for a turbulent world. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, Peter's vessel, beset by the storms of our restless times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public servants who help administer national and local government, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in industry and the military who work on ships, and the families who wait for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For men and women in our community whose presence we miss at the table of the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the departed we remember in this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions and for the intentions offered in this Mass. Father, in Christ, you make us a new creation. Favorably hear your children who seek your saving power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Your house beneath. 
for your mercy as we open our hearts to receive your forgiveness, O Lord. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through Him the host of angels adores Your Majesty and rejoices in Your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. As we face our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of His body and blood, let us be assured of our faith in Him, a God who is powerful, a God who cares for us. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now pray the prayer of gratitude for the gift of our new Archbishop. All together, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ Good Shepherd and High Priest, we, we praise you and offer you our sincere gratitude for calling Cardinal Jose Advincula to serve as our Archbishop. May he lead us as a loving shepherd who cares for his flock and seeks out the lost sheep. May he be for us a gentle and listening father, a faithful teacher and a steward of your sacred mysteries. Grant him health, strength, and wisdom 
strengthen the bonds of unity among us, your priests and faithful in our archdiocese, so that we may serve you as one body. Purify us and sustain us in charity, for your love for us never fails. Grant that the faithful of our local church may boldly answer your call to mission. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We would like to thank all of you who have joined us in this celebration. Those who are standing outside, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtsatsaga at pakikiisa po sa ating pagdiriwang. And all those who are joining us online, we thank you for your continued uh, support and the following the Manila Cathedral page. And uh, this coming Thursday, June 24, at 8.30 in the morning, our new Archbishop, Cardinal Jose Advincula from the Archdiocese of Capiz will be coming and uh, will be installed here in the Manila Cathedral. Let us join in preparing ourselves in prayer, in catechesis and charity. And uh, we also invite all of you to join the celebrations online. Um, the cathedral will have limited capacity, so those who will be coming inside the cathedral were already chosen and handpicked so that everyone, all parishes, will be uh, represented in the cathedral. So since uh, we are all only allowed 400 people inside this church, then we cannot really accommodate everyone. But we invite all of you to join the celebrations online and it will be shown live in, on our Facebook page, the Manila Cathedral. And you can also watch this on uh, the TV Maria channels uh, in your cable TV and in your TV media boxes. So let us join together as one in welcoming our new Archbishop of Manila, Jose Cardinal Advincula. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. God, our Father, bless all fathers gathered here today and those who are watching us online. Grant them your strength of your spirit so that they may love their wives with faithfulness and trust that they may be exemplar in Christian values to their children and they may establish their families with perseverance in work through Christ our Lord. Amen. Keep your family, we pray, O Lord, in your constant care so that nourished by your body and blood, they may be free from all troubles and by good works, Show dedication to your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Lord, we give our hands.